Hi everyone, welcome to part 3 of the series on transformers. So this is the well-known figure of the transformer architecture. In my previous video, we saw about the multi-headed attention, which is the core building block of the transformers. What we are yet to see is the positional encoding and input embedding modules. So let's take a look at them in this video. Let's take the example of translation from English to French and let the inputs be hello, how are you? And the French translation being Bonjour, comment allez-vous? The input to the transformers is words which we have to transform to numbers. Even the best AI system in the world cannot yet understand words directly and so we have to convert them into numbers. But they're not just any numbers but numbers that are sensible. So in order to do this we do the below steps. We first tokenize the input sentences into comma separated list of words and add additional tokens to indicate the start and end of the sentences. We now look at the vocabulary we have built from the training set data to find out what the index of the word is in the vocabulary. The vocabulary is just a one-to-one -one mapping between each word in the training set against a unique number. So how do we create a vocabulary in the first place? Let's take a simple training set with the two sentences. This is the first sentence and this is the second sentence. To build a vocabulary with these two sentences, we simply create a dictionary that gives a unique index for each word that is in the data set. Somewhat separately, it also holds a count of each of the words as metadata. Having built this vocabulary, we can now put our input words, hello, how are you, through the vocabulary and get indices for each of the words. However, there's still a problem. These indices can get really big in no time. Just imagine working with the entire text from the Wikipedia pages. So, as a standard practice in machine learning, the solution is to normalize this data to be between 0 and 1. However, given the massive number of words in a language, working with just one number per word will firstly keep us in lower dimension and secondly will reduce the representative power massively. So, each of these numbers per word is converted into higher dimensional vectors corresponding to each word. In other words, each word is no longer just one number, but a vector of several numbers. The dimension of this vector is predefined by us. In transformers, they just use the dimension of 512 for these vectors. The process of converting each word into these high dimensional vectors is called input embedding or token embedding. You can think of the embedding as a massive lookup table that holds a d-dimensional vector per word. In this case, the size of d is 512. If you wish to see this in action, you can quickly hack the embedding class from PyTorch and ask it to provide an embedding lookup table. In this example, you have just created embedding for five words each with four dimensional vector. You can see that the output for index 3 is always the same, shown by the last two rows in the output. And that's how you generate the token embeddings or the input embedding. We now have a problem, however, when it comes to transformers. Up until the LSTMs were state of the art, we used to pass the input words in sequence so that the model knows the order of the words in the sequence. However, the transformer takes the entire sentence as input parallelly. Even though this is one of the biggest advantages of the transformers, the order of the words in the sentence is lost. So we should somehow find a way to tell that order in which the words occur. If we go back to our example input about how are you, all combinations like are you, how, you, how, are, are all treated alike by the transformer. In 
In fact, it produces the same output for all the inputs because there's nothing in the input to specify the order of the words. So the solution lies in what is called the positional encoding. In order to specify the positions, we add a vector that is of the same dimension as the input vector D and then pass it as input to the next stage, which is the multi-head attention. But how do we calculate these position encodings? Because they are inputs, we have to provide the values to these vectors. A naive solution would be to have linear values for these positions. For example, we could just use 0, 1, 2 for the words, how are you? But unfortunately, this won't work. Because we are constantly adding a small number to the words at the beginning of the sentence and a large number to the final words, this leads to a bias in the model which blows up the values of the words occurring towards the end of the sentence. Additionally, if the input has two sentences, giving continuous numbers like this will make the model think that the two sentences always occur together at all times. Well, you may argue that we could normalize these positions so that we could get a value between 0 and 1. However, if the length of the sentence is different, we will end up getting different values for the same position. For example, if the sentence is how are you today instead of how are you, then for position 3, the value is 0.75 instead of 1. So we don't want any dependency on the length of the sentence either. So what's the best way to calculate these positions? Clearly, the value of no position should be too high in order to mitigate any bias in the model. The second and the most important requirement is that the value of each position should be unique and should not change depending on the length of the sentence. And finally, the positional encoding should be within a range and so need non-linearity in how we produce these values. Considering all of this, this one family of equations that can serve these requirements and it's nothing other than the trigonometric family. So the authors have come up with this simple equation to get the values of the positional encodings. The outputs are governed by the index i, which ranges from 0 to 7, for fixed size dimension d equal to 8 of the vector. The plot on the right shows the value of the sine curve in blue. And one of the problems with sine is that it's 0 for position 0. We don't want the entire vector to be getting to 0. To complement this, the authors alternate between cosine and sine and based on the index i so that the position vector always takes some value. But these equations clearly suggest that even positions are filled by the sine values and the odd positions are filled by the cosine values. Additionally, because the frequency of both the sine and cosine curves change with the index i, this means the value also changes and hence each position gets a unique vector. And that's how we achieve unique values for each position vector irrespective of the sentence length and also by meeting all the criteria that I mentioned early on. In the implementation video, which is coming up next, I will go through the implementation of the positional encoding as well, along with the implementation of the multi-head self-attention. Hopefully, we all would have learned and implemented transformers by then. Please do leave your comments and questions and I will reply back and let's all learn AI together. Till then, bye.